Come in. She's showing that we can talk about sex, no problem, right? But the mother didn't talk about body, and she wanted to talk about body. It's good to talk about body. It's good. You should talk to your parents and body. You should talk to your children about body. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. 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 And taught me how to shave my legs. And we can guess she might have taught other things also. She writes only about saving legs, right? 
But we can easily guess that the friend might have other things also. And I don't know. What, do you need to say legs? Yes. Yes. Okay, if, if it is hearing. Yes. I, I do agree, right? Yes. If it is hearing because of because of your what you call you uh, girls can grow hairy legs because of hormonal imbalance. It's because of hormonal. Mm. Otherwise, if you have hormonal imbalance, that a female body is not so. Yes, I I have this issue at home. Mm -hmm. I have this issue at home. But as I understand, it's people say I may be wrong. I may be right. People say it's because of hormonal imbalance. Okay. Okay. I agree. I agree with you. A school friend took pity on me and taught me how to save my legs and other arms. Saving your arms. My mother disapproved yeah. doing this. This was mere enslavement. When I had my first period, I had no idea what was happening. But afterwards, apparently, on the advice of Dr. Spock, the child care expert, my mother had me sit on my my mother had me sit on my father's lap and had him announce to my gross our siblings that I have become a woman. And we might as well have been announcing that I have genitals. My mortification was complete. She felt as if she had been killed. Daddy kept on the lap. He got siblings. He said, look, now Manju has become a woman. And she didn't like this idea. This is internal conflict. Cultural conflict. Cultural practices at home and cultural practices outside home. Conflict. See this conflict. I was too hapless to understand the reasons. See, internal conflict. The reasons for my misery. But miserable I was in my half Nepali, half American life. See this. Ambivalent identity. Or let's say, Double identity, or let's say split identity, or let's say conflicting identity, or let's say hybrid identity, where you show features of two cultures. So she didn't know if she was American or let me exactly my niece who came to us last month. Just 11. She her Nepali is very awkward, she can't speak Nepali properly. Her English is just native English, American English. And she says, I don't like the father, I don't like these boys. I asked, do you have Netflix boyfriend? Mm -hmm. I said, I hate Netflix boys, how can I make my friends? She says. Mm -hmm. And she names all English boys' names. They are my, my friends in school. Right? I took refuse from it in our look. So to come out of this misery, she started painting. She started painting. When I learned to mix colors, to draw likenesses, to steady my hand, I learned to use pencil, charcoal, pencil, watercolors, acrylics, oils. I went to the National Gallery and copied Picasso. I painted from life. I painted from my imagination. Fruits, glasses, portraits of famous people, self-portraits, portraits of my own hands paint I painted. Why? Why did she paint? Because she was seeking Freedom. She was seeking freedom. But art did not exempt me from all the obligations. Though we belong to the impoverished underbelly of District of Columbia's diplomatic world, we did go to the White House and every now and then to black tie galas of balls. Once a year, the embassy hosted a national day reception in a hotel basement. Hotel basement. Why? To get no money to pay for a good room. Where professional gate crashers, who is a great crasher, you come without being invited. 
Crash the gate. You're not invited, you get in. Could come for free drinks and meal. Then please could go. Right? Also, once a year, the embassy hosted a dozen party at the embassy, which overflowed with shooted and booted men and sari clad women. There was an occasional meeting of friends of Nepal and Nepalese in America. That we kids had to go. Look at the language. Had to go to. Had to go to. She did not enjoy going to the same party. But Paris did. Them. I also remember my sister and I having to. Having to parade our sister language. Having to post. Parade. In ironical. Bukhus, I don't know, it is Baku, Baku, Nepal, it is, I don't know. And some fear run by a diplomatic wives. None of this constituted my idea of fun. Look, all this was no fun. During spring and Christmas breaks, the embassy turned into a boarding house as Nepali students, the children of family friends came to sit out their school or college break. Girls would share my sister and my room. In the attic, boys would share my brother's attic room. My parents' room below us was off limits. Extra guests would also be put up in the official guest room and even in the royal guest room, which was no less derelict than the rest of the embassy. A royal guest room, but in very poor condition. I'll read and just focus if necessary. One year, a Nepali student who boarded with us took it upon himself to pursue me. I was an ungainly 14-year-old with black hair and large eyeglasses. The boy was 20. He told me he loved me and kissed me. His lips were faintly repulsive like warm milk. I remember being baffled physically. Writing is honest writing. Look how she brings personal experiences. After he returned to college, we talked a couple of times on the phone. When he Bros the subject of marriage, though I decided to end our whatever it was, our baffled romance. He protested, but I have already told my parents we are getting married. I'm 14 years old, I said. We will wait, of course, he said. No, I said. Don't you love me? He said. I don't think so, I said. That's not love. When you about the body, that's not work. That's infatuation. Okay. Some days later, he had his roommate called to say that he had been hospitalized after a suicide attempt because I said no to that. Distressed, I confessed all to my sister. She advised me to confess all to my mother. Even more distressed, I confessed all to my mother. See the conflict. This is internal conflict. Conflict at home. And she was 14 when all this was happening. So this is a story we call coming of age story. This is a genre where we call coming of age story. A story where writers describe their experience of growing up. So this is story narrates the experience of growing up. What happens to you when you grow up? Okay. Oh, why does it make this sound? This time I use it. Okay. <coughs> In my mother's fifth body, no Nepali boy will ever marry you now. Because you have been defined. Defined. What is defined? Defined means once you have had sex or body contact with somebody, you are not fit to be married. Then with a few quick phone calls to the boy and his parents in Nepal, she and my father made the whole thing go away. 
day before I'm ready to post it. I believe my mother, no Nepali boy would ever marry me now. That belief set me free. Oh God. Look. That belief set me free. No Nepali boy would marry me. And I felt, thank God I'm free. <laughs> thank God I'm free. If no Nepali boy was ever going to marry me, why not? I reason actually be worthy of rejection. Since he decided, not only Nepali boy, now no boy will marry. She decided now, I'll make sure no boy marries me because marriage is end of all freedom for women at least. Why marry? Because this is end of all freedom. Right? Why bother to be good Nepali girl? I hate it to be good Nepali girl. Who is a good Nepali girl? Naina Mandula kind of girl. Who is a good Nepali girl? Nine, Ravandu law, kind of girl. Or any kind of girl at all. I didn't want to be girl at all. God. See the conflict. Psychological conflict. For a stormy year and a half, I wore my hair short to look like a boy. Dressed in lumberjack outfit to cover the body, growing body. I look like a boy. What with a manly swagger? I look like a boy. Rejected everything to do with pleasing Nepali girlhood. I wanted to be a boy. I wanted to be a boy. And not just any boy. I wanted to be a free born western boy. Freeborn Western boy, not just any freeborn Western boy. I wanted specifically to be born, born the Swedish tennis star. That was my role model. Born, born that brooding intensity, that headband, those wristbands, that two-handed Western. That hand, that blonde hair, and those blue eyes I love. Those long muscular legs I wanted to have. Look, there is an internal conflict. In those white, white shorts, those socks and kesri shoes, the V-neck vest and the shirt underneath, the gaze of the boy, the steadiness, the resolve of the boy. I wanted to be like one, not an ordinary boy, a very special boy. Every tennis course I copied him. Off the court I poured over articles about him, worrying about his rocky marriage too and divorce from Mariana. Serial skew praying for him to believe in himself. Look, don't marry, believe in yourself. Don't marry, marriage is in the freedom. And railing, railing against the right of John McNow, I don't know who this guy is. I once wrote him a letter to the player. And his secretary sent me a signed black and white photograph of him. Born, born forever. It occurred to me very slowly that I did not want to be like him. I just loved him, but I wanted to be like somebody else now. This is what happens in his mind. It's very natural. Something similar happened to me. Something very, I wanted to be like this, like that, like this, like that. It happened to my daughter, all every year. So that's what is you Walma? It will have South Korean serial with everybody. And South Korean Kirti go to Pachas Sachi or Portas. I was a Holy Spirit boy. South Korean Morgan, I tasted her. The Kapal is a kidney, I'm a Gallagher. Kapal John Halle, or Hapa Tayo, just on one of them. Tinis, nineteen of her life. Eighty toy and five. I didn't have the cabinet. The one Wow. <laughs>
He was not the only free born Western boy I love. I also love Rod Stewart, the British singer. Now, I wanted to be like British singer Rod Stewart. My love for Rod Stewart was more exuberant and joyful, though, and this was apt as I had found out a bit late what sex was. Look, I had found out a bit late what sex was. Means she is hinting. She is hinting that she had had sexual experience. Maybe Through my baffled romance, I had had no understanding of what sex was. When I did find out, I was horrified, horrified to understand what sex was. See, like the first experience of discovering sex. And yet, look, writing, how frankly she talks about sex. This is called honest voice in writing. You speak your heart, don't pretend, don't hide. If you just believe, you are faking nobody will read. And yet, by the time I fell in love with Rod Stewart, I had come around to being intrigued by boys. Now she says, now. I had come around being into boys, now no boys could intrigue me. I knew their ways. I had stopped dressing like a lumberjack and had begun to experiment cautiously with being a girl again. Again, now I wanted to be a girl now. This is up and down. This is why I said this is coming of age narrative. A narrative that describes experiences of growing. And I had found it enjoyable. Rod Stewart, yes, my young heart beat free tonight. Yes, time was on my side. No, I was not going to let them get me down. Oh, I was not going to let them get me down. As he sang, I wasn't going to let them push me around. I wasn't going to let them ever change my point of view. I followed Rod Stewart out of my half Nepali, half American life. Identity, half Nepali, half of life, into the world, and there the influence of the school took over. Now look, you are shaped by school and college. You are shaped by your family, school, college, friends, society. By the time I was 16, I was sneaking behind my parents' back with my first American boyfriend. I was an artist, I was free. There was no bridge back that I did not set out to work. I didn't want to come back to my family and Nepali lifestyle. I wanted to be American. I was done with being Nepali. I hated being there. I was done with being Nepali. Done! Section ends. Section 3 or 4? 3. 3. Section 3. It was the late 1980s. Time changes. I was in art school in Providence, Rhode Island, and given to dressing all black dresses and compact boots from the Salvation Army. I did not be in touch with Nepalese in America. Oh, this is this is what you call. Uh, 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 there was a war on the American. Xenophobia. I did not keep in touch with the police in America and in fact avoided them. I felt constrained by the presence of other Nepalese. It was a bad enough, it, it was bad enough that I had to visit home every summer. Oh God, she didn't like coming home. Look, every summer doing darsan to oh God. I didn't like doing darsan. I remember the big attitude. Well, the I hate Darsan, 
Then those of the hundreds and hundreds of them did, looking askance at local customs and converting this essential lack of freedom. Look, as the Nepali will have to imagine that you are not free. Lots of bandhans are there. Bandhans. Bandhan. Bandhan. In Nepal, before rushing off to where my parents now live in Sri Lanka and Philippines to restore my spirit in the neither local nor foreign expatriate. No, she was neither local nor foreign expatriate. Expatriate is somebody who lives in a foreign country. Limbo that I had grown accustomed to. In Providence, in Providence it was easy enough to avoid Nepalese. And there were none around. But at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, one day, I entered a room full of Hindu statues to see an elderly couple admiring the art. The man was wearing a dhaka topi, and the woman was wearing a nevari tin tahakhasto. I, a 20 something man, their son was showing them around. Yeah, please? And she hated now her coffee, right? How she feels? As if it's look, if I look after her. Nepalese, lest be recognized as a compatriot, I hurried on to the next room to avoid going easy. Xenophobia, hating people, receiving. Next section. Now, 90s. It was late 1990, almost 2000, in Seattle, America, and I was at the end of my 20s. Having spent the better part of the decade in Nepal, battling it, I it felt like for some personal freedom, I had more or less hated. I had worked in and outside of Kathmandu. I had found my calling. Right now, she left art and became a writer. I had successfully avoided marriage. Successfully. And I was reading this line. It was difficult for me. A young girl says, successfully avoiding marriage, and she writes, I had her sex. But it was difficult for me to accept it. Because I'm from this culture, right? We, don't, we can't easily accept the fact that one doesn't marry and has sex, right? So do you see, this article brings all Western values, right? It brings all Western values. Fallen in and out and in and out of love again. And I have even for brief spells lived alone in rented apartments. God, I didn't like this line. Defying parents and running away from them, living alone. Escape that freedom, for her at least. Escaping the exhausting sociability of Nepali society. Why she lived apartments? To avoid Nepali people. She lived apartments to avoid Nepali people. I have been able to make a conflicted home in Nepal. A conflicted home. Whenever she came to Nepal, she had a conflict. She didn't like Nepali people, Nepali culture, Nepali girls, and she had to come to Nepal. She's a Nepali girl. In Nepal, I switched back to using my full name, Manjushri, as it induced anxiety in no one. In Seattle to study creative writing, I revert again to Manju. In some ways, I was more at home here than in Nepal. Look, this line. I was more at home in Seattle. In America, I felt more like home. In Nepal, I felt in a foreign country. Wait, wait, wait. I understand. It's troublesome to wait. Listen, I've got, there's, don't, don't make this ayah. I released my personal freedom and was again reluctant to meet other Nepalese. Look, reluctant to meet other Nepalese. Though not for the though not for the same erotic reasons as before. I felt I already knew too many Nepalese in Nepal. Why not while in America get to know American sister? Yet, for the first time in my life, I willingly attended a Nepali function in America. This was a Dasai party at the house of a compatriot. There I fell in with others of my own half Nepali, half American background. She met other Mandushri like her. And in the following months, we formed an easy circle. 
One of us would call the other around by night at night and say, hey, exactly, this is called, this is called hybrid identity. We call this hybrid I when you have two identities. One of us would call the other around nine at night and say, hey, what are you up to? And soon we would get, be gathered at a pub, shooting the breeze, drinking wine. I, I learned from them a lesson that has stayed with me. What lesson? There are Nepalese who form my community and there are Nepalese who do not form my community. Nepalese I like, American Nepalese. Nepalese I don't like, Nepali Nepalese. And it does not matter whether they are in or outside Nepal. Ditto non-Nepalese. Nepalese biologically, but by behavior ditto non-Nepalese. It took this very life, ditto non-Nepalese. You are a Nepali, uh, but your language is not Nepali, dress not Nepali, behavior not Nepali, nothing Nepali except body Nepali. Except pal Nepali, nothing Nepali. It took me 30 years to understand this thing to Nepali. Now next section. I guess last section. Last section now. Last section. See, I told you the story, the story and a unity, filming technique. One, section present, right? Section two, section three, section four, past. I may be wrong, see? Then section five, again present. So the story opens at hospital, right? With the receptionist, and look how it closes. Nowadays, now present. Paragraph, section two, three, four, past. Section 5 present. Nowadays I go back and forth between Kathmandu and Toronto. Back and forth, Kathmandu and Toronto. At home. Oh God, at home. And not in all places. I have settled into being a permanent insider outsider. Some people call me Manjushri. Others call me Manju. Others call me Harsas there up. Hello, the doctor says. As I enter the room, she frowns at the file in her hand. Ma, 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 manju, I say. Manju, she says. Yes, I say. Yes, that's me. Manju Sita, the story comes to end. See the technique of writing. See the technique of framing. The story opened with the receptionist calling her name. And the story ends with a doctor calling me. The story opened at the hospital, and the story ends at the hospital. And in between these two, completely whole memories come, whole nostalgia comes, where she talks about culture, politics, identity, internal conflict, external conflict. Okay. Now take your pen and copy. Open a new page. For 15 minutes, you will write non-stop, remembering as much as from the story we read today. Your time starts now. Simply write, simply write continuously for 15 minutes. Write as much as you can remember. You don't have to be correct. Don't consult notes. Just write. Write from memory. Write from memory. <laughs> Let's see how much you can recall. Everybody write for 15 minutes the story you heard from me on the whiteboard. So on the, this story? Hmm? Is this story in book? It's not in this book. This story is not in the book New Directions. You have to download from the internet. Write it now.
Go on, go on. Keep writing, keep writing. Don't worry, really just keep writing. Write as fast as possible. Don't worry about correctness, just write as much as you can remember. Keep writing, keep writing. Don't worry, really just write as much as possible, as fast as possible.
keep writing non stop don't stop just write Keep writing non stop, non stop, keep writing. The rule is you won't write, you won't stop. I mean, continue, continue. Don't worry about correctness, just remember as much as you can. You don't have to be correct, just remember as much as you can and note down.
keep writing, keep writing until you are exhausted and you have no idea. I know writing is painful, but keep writing. Simply keep writing, keep writing, don't worry. Keep writing, keep, the rule is you are not allowed to stop. I know, I know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go, I'll let you go, in a minute. Show me all pages you wrote, these two pages, right? Yes. Okay, I will just record the pages you wrote. How many pages, one page? Okay, fine, no problem. How, many, how much did you write? Okay, good. Can I see your face? Okay, this space and this side, right? Good. Yours? Okay. Good. Look how much you wrote. Look. Wonderful. Look at beautiful writing and a lot of writing, right? That's a good thing you did. Here also we have uh, this you made notes in class, right? And you wrote it. Okay, fine. Notes and the writing. Good. Let me check. A lot of writing. Good. Fine. Yours? Hmm. Almost two pages. Tired now, right? Make it yours. Okay, no problem. No problem. Yours? Okay, one and a half page, right? Good idea. Yours? Almost one and a half page. Mm. Good idea. I guess they are sick. Maybe. Good. Yours? Almost one and a half page. Good. Yours? Very fast writing, right? <laughs> Good. Oh, more than two pages. Good. Yours? About a one page. Good. Yes, about one and a half days. So, uh, you know, uh, when you when you write, when you write what you read, writing makes sure understanding, and writing improves memory. When you write something, you will easily forget. Okay. So, can you scan this writing and mail me? This is assignment. Okay? Thank you so much. Any questions? Thank you. See you October 29. After the same. Thank you. Wish you happy the same. Thank you.